I, I think he just wanted the fifth. Oh, I, I think it's certainly oh. me that it's all. Um, Where's the fourth one? I, I, I'm the last one to help you, honey, with this. I mean, There's no way to close. Yeah, I would just let that go. And yeah, just I agree. Too, because he said, there, it's going to be, be on one screen, you're going to be on another. He said, don't worry about it. So, okay. Yeah, it's true. I just went out and said, I don't know what we see. Yeah, it's all right. Know what we see. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay. Everybody okay. just sit down. It's going to be on this dimension. It is. Nothing's ever perfect. You had some very nice corporation she made. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Kathy oh, and uh, not I can't think of uh, I can't stand it. Yeah. Yeah. This is from <laughs> making it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 and uh, it was I nice. Like the I like the green. Oh, I like those colors. Very pretty. And then I took your seat. Oh, yes. Exactly. Marianne, get back safely. She did. Good. Everything's good. Yeah. She did a great job reading last week. Yeah, she did. It's nice to have her. Whoa. Roger, how are you? Good. Hello. Welcome. All right. Let me pass out some more of the. Welcome. Did you need a prayer, uh, Elena? You <laughs> have yeah, a okay, I think um, we're all set. Uh, those of you who are on Zoom, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Good. Very good. Thank you. Alex is trying to uh, work things out so that uh, we can see some of you, but the main thing is that you can see me and the board and so forth. So hopefully that's uh, working. And uh, we have three, six, seven, eight, about 10 people here and right now. So I'll ask them as they speak to uh, talk up so that you can hear them on Zoom too. I'll try to repeat anything if there's uh, something that you can't hear that, that well. Okay, so let's uh, stand. We'll begin with the prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shine in our hearts, who loves mankind, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind, that we may comprehend the proclamations of your gospels. Instill in us also reverence for your blessed commandments, so that having trampled down our carnal desires, we may lead us to a life, both in thinking and doing all those things that are pleasing to you. You, Christ, our God, are the illumination, illumination of our souls and, and bodies. And you, we are our glory, glory together with your Father, Father without beginning. beginning. Your own holy, holy good and life, and life spirit, 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 now and forever in the ages of ages. Amen. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're joining us. We could hear you uh, on the Zoom joining us. So thank you very much for uh, saying the prayer with us. Okay, I passed out. And uh, for those of you on Zoom, um, you got a copy of the uh, question and answer session. This is second session of Luke. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about a couple of different things here. And we'll begin with the Luke uh, chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. So... <clears throat> We finished last week up to that point, and uh, today, if we would, that's on page 1363 in the Orthodox uh, Study Bible there. So, uh, Bill, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, on page 1363 to read uh, those uh, 
three verses, 26 uh, through 28. The section there is called Christ's birth announced to Mary. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Okay, so in, in what month, in the sixth month, the angel, this is this month of what? Six, the June. No, of Elizabeth. Of Elizabeth's pregnancy. pregnancy. Uh, who is she uh, pregnant with? John. John. Okay, so in the sixth month is the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. All right? And then it says, we go to a city. Uh, the angel Gabriel goes to a city of Galilee named what? Nazareth. Nazareth. Now, was Nazareth a big, bustling city or a quiet, small, small town? Small, 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 quiet town. Its population was mostly Jew or Gentile? Jewish. 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 And I have the answer here for you. How many residents? About 200 to 400. Wow. 200 to 400 residents at that time. So as you're filling in the paperwork, that's the answer to the uh, number 1A. Very small town. And it's going to be interesting. We're going to talk a little more about that as we go on. Now, <clears throat> Was Nazareth highly prized or despised by the other Jews and Romans? Despised. 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 Why would you say that? It was a poor town. It was a poor town. It couldn't give them any benefit. Let's look. I'm going to, well, I'll, I'll save you time. I'll jump to John 1, 46. If you want to go to your Bible, you're more than welcome. It's on page 1423. Jesus is calling his disciples. Nathaniel wants to follow him. And Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? So you get the idea of how people, good to see you, Sandra. You get the idea of how people felt about Nazareth. So a small town, 200 to 400 people, despised by the Jews as well as the Gentiles. And yet this is where... We're going to hear about Jesus, Gabriel coming to Mary, okay? Now, in 1-3, contrast where the archangel Gabriel came to Zacharias with that of where he came to Mary. Where did Zacharias come, or where did the archangel come, and Gabriel come to Zacharias? In the what? In the temple. In what city? Probably Jerusalem. All right. Was it crowded there? Yes. Yes. Were there a lot of priests there? Yes. Yeah. Remember, he could offer incense in his lifetime probably how many times? Once. Once. So here he comes, Gabriel comes to Zacharias and Elizabeth in the temple. Here he comes to Mary in that. So. Very big, very small, very prominent, not prominent. Looked at highly upon, not looked highly upon. You start to see the contrast. Mm -hmm. You start to see the contrast. Why do you think God the Father chose Nazareth as Jesus' town? What's the difference between these two? Why would he come to here and then come here? Here to Elizabeth and Zacharias, but here to Mary. Why didn't he do the opposite? Wouldn't it be good to come while a person was praying in the temple, offering incense in the city? It's earthly glory. This is the earthly glory. What if we chose one word? We talked about this many times. He comes here because it is a very humble, humble place. Humility is coming out. He wants the contrast. He wants Gabriel's contrasting where Jesus is going to be from. He's going to come with all humility. He's going to be born, as we're going to read later on, not in the city, not where there's a lot of room, not in a prominent place, but somewhere very lowly, very lowly. So this becomes critical. 
This becomes critical. You know, think about it sometimes. <clears throat> Let's say you were living in the early church and you were in Constantinople. John Chrysostom is preaching that Sunday. Where would you want to be? There. St. Sophia. Sophia. Glorious, grandeur, etc. But is that how always Christ comes to us? No. 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 In fact, sometimes you can get hung up on the choir on the preacher, yeah. on this and that and so forth. And, and you start to elevate yourself to where you come out of church. Now, don't get me wrong. You go to church to feel good, right? But when you come out, you say, man, that was uplifting. That was great. And then other times, sometimes it's good to go in a small little chapel, wooden chapel, where there's maybe 25 chairs, like we were up at the monastery. Or After we went to up to, Springs, or to Tarpon yeah, Springs yeah, into yeah, the uh, yeah, St. Yeah. Michael Archangel, where you go into a small church, nothing yeah. ostentatious, you know, not grandeur. Or a prayer chapel way out in the, on the hilltop in yes. Greece. Yes. I uh, love that. A prayer chapel on the hilltop in Greece, or you named it small. Orthodox country. It's, it's small. Yeah, very small, but very, uh, what would you say, peaceful, mm -hmm. tranquil. And amazes. The other time I went with her father, we hiked over. There wasn't a single one that we went into. We were in the remote. Area. Right, right. There's always a candle lit. Somebody down here. Yes, room. always a candle lit. Somebody may even leave something there or whatever, but you'll always have somebody that just left there is coming, you know, oh, right yeah, after. Seldom solvent. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Um, I'm just going to read a little here. Um, well, let me hold off on that. I'll, I'll read it a little later on. Um, let's go on to uh, 1D. Why is it important that Mary is a virgin in relation to the birth of Christ? Notice it says here, as Bill just read it. Uh, now the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was. Why is that important? An immaculate conception and it's got to be pure. Pure. Oh, okay, so we're talking here now about the fact that she was pure. So the purity, all right? And we're going to talk a little more about this as we go on. Uh, I'll have us uh, read uh, in a moment. What does the name Mary actually mean? The, the exalted one, the exalted one, exalted one. Mary is known as the exalted one, all right? <clears throat> yes. When Archangel Gabriel <laughs> presented himself before Mary, was she at the temple? No. No. In fact, good question. I don't have the icon, but this goes back to the, uh, contrasting the temple with what she was doing. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Has anybody ever heard of the icon of what Mary uh, portrays Mary doing when Gabriel comes? She was sewing. Exactly. She was knitting. She was knitting. <laughs> Why is that important? What's that? What does that mean? She was just a normal everyday. Exactly. Person. Every day she was doing her everyday work. Everyday work, normal. Everyday work. She was not in the temple at that time. She was going ahead, and you'll see the icon very interestingly with uh, knitting. With knitting, she's knitting there to show that she is a very humble, even though she's probably called the one, very humble, normal person. All right, so we have a chair over here. There's one right there. Just uh, we have another person coming in, so we're just getting them seated. 
<laughs> okay, let's read the note on the Orthodox Study Bible for 127 there. Uh, Nancy, if you would read that on the bottom there of page 136. Yeah, 136, three, note for 127. On the bottom? Yeah, the note. Mm -hmm. The name Mary means exalted one. When Joseph is referred to as of the house of David, it reveals Mary also as descended from David's royal lineage. 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 The righteous man would usually marry within his own tribe. Twice in this verse and again by indication, Luke calls Mary a virgin. Now that's important because they don't forget the tribes. The original 12, of course, became very important. And so you, everything in, in the Jewish religion was based on what? Genealogy. And so you had to trace your descendants right back. Remember we said, on what day do we read the uh, section from Matthew? This one begat that, that one begat that. Does anybody remember? What ho holy day do we read that? Or the day before the holy day? Sunday. The, sun, the Sunday before Christmas. All right, and you hear this and you go through. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting because you'll see that they're by, divided up Sunday. into three sections of 14. So I won't go into the detail right now, but the point is, as it mentions here, Mary is blessed, highly favored, um, and she was descended from David's royal lineage. That's the key. It doesn't have anything to do with biology because she never had relations. So it has all to do with her tracing everything back. Now, unfortunately, there are people today in the Christian circles who don't believe in the virgin birth. Yeah, right. And so this will be a controversy. We're going to see later on, and, and this gets a little more detailed, where the translation is going to say woman. And there's a reason for that, not here, but later on. And we'll talk more about that as we go down the word uh, road. What prayer do we use? I don't know how to say it in Greek, but in, Eng in English or Russian, I know. <laughs> uh, what prayer do we say in the Orthodox Church uh, to the Virgin Mary? Not on Sunday, it is truly me to bless you, O Theotokos. Not that one. There's another one. How do you Blessing of the five loves. Okay, yes. And, and how do you, but what is that prayer? Do you know the words to it? In, in Greek, how, 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 how would you translate from Greek to English? Give me, give me a second. Oh, yes. I'll say it in Greek. Yes, right. The one I think about, the Sikaragia Theotokos, preservated. No, no. Yeah, that's good too, but that's just, a, uh, that's just one. That's one uh, phrase, yeah. Oh, we have a lot of them, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of them. I'm, I'm particularly looking at one. The Roman Catholics would call Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace. And our translation is different. Go ahead. I, I know it's in Greek. Yeah. You can translate. Greek, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Among women, yeah. 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 Okay, in English, it would go, Rejoice, O Virgin Theotokos, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Yeah. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. For you have borne the Savior of our souls. The Roman Catholics have a very similar one. The translation's a little different, but that one's used. Look in your prayer book. Look in your prayer book. You will find that prayer. And there are certain ones that we should memorize. That would be one. There are certain ones to uh, uh, God, the Trusagian, Agios Oteos, Agios Iskros, Doxa Patri. Almost Holy Trinity and mercy on us, etc. The Lord's Prayer. This one I just mentioned, Rejoice of Virgin Theotokos. How do you start it in Greek? See, so as soon as you hear it, you, <laughs> you, you got it. The other one we sing every Sunday is after the consecration of the grace. Yeah, it is truly me to bless you, O Theotokos, ever blessed and most fear in the mother of our God, more honorable. So all I'm saying is 
in the prayer book, it's nice to memorize these so that you don't have to go to the prayer book all the time to uh, get that. The little prayer book you're speaking of? Uh, there, it should be in the, uh, any of the prayer books. Uh, in the bookstore, the uh, Antiochian one, the Greek one, it should be there. Uh, any of them, I think we could, yeah, it should be there. Okay, now. Also, we use it some in the salutations. The yeah, salutations, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Okay, now, uh, moving on, uh, let me see here. Uh, let's read the note again. On um, 128 there, Denise, if you would read that. While Eve brought forth children in sorrow, Mary, being the new Eve, will rejoice in bringing forth her son. As Eve had been cursed, so now Mary is blessed. Highly favored. In Greek, haridu. Can also be translated full of grace. Mary is the most blessed woman who has ever lived because of her complete willingness to receive God's grace, or in the words of her son, to hear the word of God and keep it. Okay, this is, uh, again, critical. She is the most blessed woman who has ever lived. Is she the prototype, the icon for women or for women and men? Both. 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 Because of one thing, she says, yes, she's obedient. Let it be done according to your will. In the Old Testament, what did Eve say? Nope. She did, Eve did not obey. She said, no, thank you. I'm going to eat. Mary says, so we call her the great yes. <laughs> she says yes to the archangel. Notice the contrast. She becomes, in theological terms, she does everything that he should have done. Big difference here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard somebody say immaculate conception. And that term, I believe, means that a Mary was born with uh, without any sin, that she yes. was sin. But we, we, we don't do believe not believe that. that. No. We that's, believe that she had the, that's why she's so special, because she could have said no. It wasn't like she was, she was made sinless. Right. She was made just like us. Right. Right. So she could have said no. We're going you to know. get into that. I'm going to keep that. Yeah, I just heard somebody say that. Yes. We, we are going to talk about the Immaculate Conception. Yeah. Uh, after, because there's a, book, a section here on Mary I want to read, and we're going to bring that in. And if I forget, remind me at the end. I won't discuss it this week because it's, it's going to go into a little more detail. And I want to spend the time on the Immaculate Conception because <laughs> I don't know if those of you who follow, follow sports, you'll hear about the Hail Mary, the Immaculate Reception, where the <laughs> quarterback throws the ball to the end zone and immaculately <laughs> they catch the ball for a touchdown and win the game. Harris. Franco <laughs> Harris, those of you who are my age, remember Franco Harris with the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Oakland Raiders, <laughs> bounces off. Jack Tatum, the oh, linebacker. Right <laughs> it's like yesterday. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> uh, so that, now, this is important. New, the new Eve. The new Eve. All right, so she says yes. Everything that Adam... Now, if Mary is the new Eve, who is the new Adam? Jesus. Jesus. Christ is the new Adam. Very important. Theologically, you could go in a lot of detail about this, but we don't have the time. <laughs> Men probably don't have the fortitude to do it. But uh, anyway, let's move on then. In uh, F, because of Mary's betrothal to Joseph, her child could be heir to the Davidic throne. It was through Joseph's legal, not biological paternity, that Christ was the legal descendant of David and was David's messianic heir. This is why Mary is defined here in terms of her betrothal to Joseph, even though Joseph was not to be the child's biological father. Now, were Zacharias and Elizabeth married? Yes. yes. Did they remain obedient to God? Yes. 
did they wait a long time and with patience? Yes. Yes. They still served even after she was childless, which was a bit a big uh, negative for her at that time. Christ is born to a woman who doesn't have a what? A husband. So if you can think of how nice we described the temple, Jerusalem, and Zacharias and Elizabeth, and then we start thinking of Mary and Nazareth, you can see, like, you can say, wow, this doesn't compute. This is hard to take unless you use, come back to that one word, humility. He's trying to show that I am coming, and now he's coming as the Savior, he's coming as the Messiah, etc. We're going to talk about that. But it shows the contrast there. Now, what is a betrothal? When you think of the word betrothal today, what do, what word comes to mind if I were to use one word? Engagement. Yeah, engagement. Now, is the betrothal today the same as it was back then? No. 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 Okay. And <laughs> you must have another idea there. <laughs> <laughs> now what I, I'm thinking of. All right, engagement at today, when you think about it. Now, let me divert here. I've seen a priest do this. You could actually do this part of the service today, if you get the bishop's permission, when a couple gets engaged. You could do it. That is called the first part, which is the, what's the uh, big symbol that we do when people, uh, in the first part of the service? The exchanging of the rings. That part could be done when a couple would get engaged. Then you just do the crowning when you come to the service for the wedding. Is it done that way usually? No, no. These are combined. Now, the difference here, let's go down. In Jesus' day, was it more of a personal romantic choice on the part of a man and woman or more of a business transaction or contract? Business. It was big time business. Yeah. Business and contract. Did they usually have the choice of who they were going to marry? No. no. Now, some of you say that as if you had some experience. <laughs> 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 now, let's be honest. It's a, 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 some of these countries so mm -hmm. where the grandparents were, it's our grandparents or parents or whatever, you've heard of arranged marriages. And I used to say, I look at it, and some of those turn out all right. You know, as much as we would say, you know, some did not, it's no different than today. So nothing's guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed. Let me say something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My sister, she was 17 years old, mm -hmm. my younger sister. And somebody did the arrangement. arrangement. Thank you, the arrangement from somebody in Germany, Greek guy. Yeah. If she married him, yeah. she had two children. Almost 50 years later, they're still married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've seen it go both ways. I've seen it work out, uh, and usually it's due to commitment uh, and obedience and so forth. And I've seen it not work out very well uh, for various reasons. Um, what are the religion in the world today still does that a lot? Muslim. Islam. Islam. Yes. Yes. There, when you think of how the women are dressed and so forth, uh, it, it's definitely arranged a lot uh, between the parents. All right. Now, in the early times, was the betrothal binding? Yes. 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 Say, yeah. yes. Not only was it binding. The contract. It was a contract. Therefore, if you broke the contract, and that's, I have a blank there for you. It says, what had still had to be paid? The dowry. The dowry, the dowry. The dowry still had to be paid. So it's not like we think today of an engagement and you can say, well, let's see how it goes. And if it works out fine, you know, maybe I'll buy your ring then. <laughs> so at that time, it was a business contract and the parents said, I don't want to pay any dowry, so make sure you stay together. So you could see how to put yourself in Mary's position. Put yourself in Joseph's position. All right, they're betrothed. And then Joseph's going to be told his wife's pregnant. You can imagine how, you know. So here we have this story 
that we at Christmas time make it so nice, you know, Jesus in the crib and the nice cradle with the animals blowing on him hot air and all. And, you know, it's it's not it's not it's not the same, you know, as we look at that. Okay, now let's uh, read. Well, we just read the note already. Okay. Now, I'm going to get into something. We're going to divert here a little, but I think it's important. We're going to have to go back to the Old Testament. And I want you to turn to page 361 in your thought study Bible. We're going back to Genesis. Oh. 361. It's going to take a little while, but I think it's worth reading this. Uh, two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. 361. My fault. Two kingdoms or two Samuel 361. This talks about, this is a special section here that talks about God's covenants with his people, Israel. And this becomes important to understand what happens in the New Testament. So I'm going to take time to actually have these read. Because when you hear, if I ask you, what are the two parts of the Bible? There is the new, or the old, and the new what? Testament. Testament. But the better word, instead of testament, would be covenant. What's the difference? When you think of the word testament versus the word covenant, how do you differentiate between that, those two? Covenant is an agreement that's binding yeah. that whose word? God's word. God. Your word again and mine or God's and his people. When that comes together, a testament, you think more along the lines of what? Somebody giving a testimony, just talking a story already. Covenant, you start to see like a what I would call an interlocking agreement. In binding agreement that says, I will do this, you do that, I will help you, you do this, etc. Okay, so covenant becomes very critical. Okay, Mary, if you would start reading there uh, on page 361. Uh, the very beginning? Yes. The Lord had a co covenantal relationship. Coven covenantal. Mm -hmm. Covenantal relationship with the Israelites, whereby he promised to always protect and provide for them as well as rescue them. In return, they agreed to worship and serve only him as prescribed. When foreign armies invaded Israel or when other disasters occurred, the prophets constantly interpreted such calamities as resulting from the people falling away from their covenant, covenantal to mm -hmm. commitment to the Lord. Okay, so notice the words that are used there between uh, God. He says that he's going to protect by Protect, provide, and eventually he has to do what to them? Rescue. Rescue them. Because why? What do they always do? Forsake. They forsake them. They always go. They always go. They always go. Yeah. They always go up as Barry just said. So they go against them all the time. Okay, keep reading, Mary. The prophets convey God's grief and anger when the Hebrews stayed strayed from him. Israel one, one. That, you don't have to read that. Yeah. <laughs> Yet he remains faithful to the covenant, even when his even when his people do not. God even commands the prophet Hosea to demonstrate his unfailing fidelity to Israel, despite all the times she has played the harlot with other gods. Now, we could go into that uh, Hosea sometime, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful uh, book there. We don't have the time right now. One thing that you'll hear about God is he is a jealous God. Jealous God. Jealous God. What does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. No other gods but him. Yeah, in other words, I'm doing this for you, and I want you to put me, no other pagan gods, anybody else. We have a covenant is between Christ or God and his chosen people originally. And as long as we have that, that's what their main thing is to do. Okay, Angela, pick up there next. 
Uh, let's see what we left off. Bear with me because I left my glasses. In. <laughs> okay. um, the Old Testament records several covenants between God and his people. Through these successive overlapping covenants, God gradually draws all of mankind <clears throat> through his chosen people closer to himself. Now, here come the covenants. Go ahead. The covenant with Noah. God pledges that there will never be another flood like the one which destroyed the previous civilization. Okay. The covenant with Abraham, God promises to Abraham a great multitude of descendants who will inherit the land of Canaan and always be his shall be blessed. The covenant under Moses established by the Lord shortly after <clears throat> excuse me, he miraculously rescues his people out of Egypt. This covenant provided the lengthy and detailed Mosaic law to guide the Hebrews in their relations with one another and with him. The renewal of the Mosaic covenant under Joshua. <clears throat> the covenant who, who led the people into the, who actually went into the promised land? Was it Moses or Joshua? Joshua. Uh, Joshua. Go ahead. The covenant with David and his son Solomon, this covenant establishes the house of David forever. His seed shall remain forever in his throne as the sun before me. From this promise comes the expectation of a great king and savior, David's descendant, who will deliver Israel from all her enemies and will rule the earth with righteousness and peace. That's critical. So notice all these covenants. We, um, the one I didn't put up here yet was David. David is critical. Remember we said that Mary could trace her back, uh, lineage back. Through whom? David. David. Mm -hmm. David becomes critical, okay? It says here, as uh, Angela just read, this establishes the house of David forever. His seed shall remain forever. His throne as the sun before me. So, in the Psalm 88. From this promise comes the great king and savior who's going to rule the earth with righteousness and peace. Notice how you could expect all of the people of God to expect an earthly king. They thought whoever comes through David's going to save us. They didn't know from what the, what or did they, what for did, what. What did they ignore to get the message so wrong? You know, that uh, uh, Marcos just asked, what did they ignore uh, to get the message so wrong? Anybody want to comment on that? I think they were so much under the, the yeah. rule of <clears throat> the Romans. Tyranny. Yeah. Tyranny. Yeah. That they were actually looking for somebody to get them out of it. And they thought that was it. You know? Plus, how would, how would they think? I think it's easy for us since mm -hmm. Jesus was born, to know of the mm -hmm. resurrection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would they have any idea yeah. really mm -hmm. that souls mm -hmm. live on? And, and yeah. it's not just now, let's follow that up. We have Christ yeah. because we have pictures of him. We have icons of him. We know that he lived, etc. But let's say we were listening to Jeremiah and Isaiah. How would we know? And let's say we even live. Let's go a little further. Let's say we lived during the time of John the Baptist. How would we know that this was the Messiah? That the long awaited? How would we know that Jesus was? The prophecies. The prophecies, number one. If you go back and read all the prophecies, especially all of the, uh, the major and the minor prophets, they all pointed to him. What else, though, what was happening at that time when John the Baptist was preaching? What was Jesus doing? Preparing the road for him. Preparing the road by, by doing what? Healing. healing. He was performing miracles. He was performing. Jesus says when they say, I don't have the exact quote. They, they ask, is this the prophet? And they went and asked Jesus. And he says, the deaf are hearing. The blind are seeing. The people are walking. In other words, go tell John these things are happening. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. Which one? All of the healings and miracles. The healings and miracles. Connecting that. Yeah. Now, today we have to be careful 
because who else can perform miracles? The bad one. The devil. Mm -hmm. So this is where you have to discern yeah. between the healings of Christ and those of the devil. Mm -hmm. At that time, uh, the other thing that happened, um, unfortunately, they had... And this was a big thing as we read the history there. The one thing when the Jewish people got in from into the promised land, they made one big mistake. <clears throat> and you could read this time and again. God tells them, go and destroy the people who are there. Did they destroy all of them? None of them. None of the 12 tribes. That's why you will see, if you read the Old Testament, there was always a remnant. And then what did they do between them? Intermarried. Intermarried. Now, this is where it gets very difficult because if you start to intermarry, usually, like today, no different, one person is going to be stronger than the other in a marriage, generally. And one may say, I'm going to follow the true God at that time. And the other one may say, we're following the pagan God. Mm -hmm. And more so than not, guess who gave in? Mm -hmm. This one, true God. The, the, the person who was stronger wound up here. So time and again, Jesus is going to rescue these people. Time and again. So what we say was a good question that Marcos had is what prevented them from mm -hmm. seeing Christ as the Messiah? Is it any different today? No. 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 Really no. 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 We still have people who don't believe. Mm -hmm. In fact, that number is increasing. Mm -hmm. And those who do believe is de decreasing. <laughs> and so people could ask us, you even had Christ come. How could you not? You have the Bible. How could you not? So who's going to be held more responsible on the one hand? Us. We are. Mm -hmm. We are. Because we should know better. We should know better. Okay. Uh, continue there if you would. Uh, and don't. The prophet Ezekiel prophesies. 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 A covenant of peace inaugurating a future era of peace and prosperity for Israel under the care of one shepherd, my servant David. Jeremiah and Ezekiel envisioned this new covenant to be based on the spiritual cleansing and renewal of men's hearts. Isaiah foresees the new everlasting covenant when God will gather all people to share in the blessings of Israel. Keep going. The New Testament or new covenant Prophesy. <laughs> by Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Isaiah is inaugurated on earth by Jesus Christ, the son of David, the one shepherd who comes to gather all people to himself in spiritual unity and who sends the Holy Spirit on Pentecost to dwell in his followers. Jesus declares at the Last Supper, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And we hear that where? In every... The divine liturgy. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you, etc. The new cup. Go ahead. Thus, directly linking the new covenant with a covenant meal, the Eucharist, calling Christ the mediator of a better covenant, the book of Hebrews dramatically demonstrates how he fulfills and supersedes the old covenant made with the Israelites. In the church, the new Israel, we all have the opportunity to experience the spiritual joy of the new covenant as a foretaste of the heavenly kingdom in which believers from all nations will rejoice with God eternally. Hence, it is a very, hence it is very fitting that every divine liturgy begins with the proclamation, blessed is the kingdom. So what we have here, if Mary was the new Eve, Jesus was the new Adam. Who is the new Israel? The church. The church. So you see all these covenants that God made with his people. And time and again, they broke them. 
time and again they broke them. But does he ever give up? No. No. He never gives up. And that's why there's always, always the chance for anybody who repents to receive the forgiveness and mercy of God. That's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it. Even Israel, anybody who repented during that time, anyone mm -hmm. who repents sincerely has mm -hmm. that opportunity. So if you ever think of covenants, now, I'll be honest with you, I was listening to a Christian radio station the other day in, on, uh, in the car, and there was a man who did not like what we just read. He was not big in the covenant relationship. And he read the church fathers, on some, uh, which surprised me. But he uh, did not go down the road. Of, uh, he didn't like this top concept of covenant, the old covenants and the new one, uh, which surprised me. I was uh, surprised on the one hand. I probably should have listened longer, but I had to leave. But um, I would have liked to have discussed that. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. Okay, let's read now. Go back uh, to where we were on page 1363. <laughs> In the uh, study Bible, we're going to read chapter 1. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Susie to read that, verses 29 to 33 on page 1363. 1, 3, 6, but when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting was this. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb <laughs> and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, <clears throat> and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Okay, going back into uh, the question and answer sheet, number two, A, 2A, Jesus literally means what? The word Jesus. Begins with an A, S. Savior, Savior. Savior. Very good. Jesus means a Savior. In Hebrew, what is it? Is his name? Joshua. Joshua. Joshua, Joshua in Hebrew. <laughs> All right. Now, the word Christ means the what one? Anointed one anointed one okay that is for christ the what messiah messiah very good okay a lot of people don't know this so you have jesus and then you have christ so when you think about it jesus is his name if we could use that Christ is almost like who he was, the anointed one. When we say anointed one, what does that mean? What, first of all, what comes to mind when you think of anoint? What, what? Oil. 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 <laughs> when the priest anoints the baby to be baptized with oil or with the holy chrism. So he's anointed by whom? God the Father. God the Father. He's the anointed one. He is the Messiah. He is the long awaited anointed one he is the savior people what kind of savior did they expect and want at that time earthly, earthly to defeat everybody else and make sure he puts them in charge all right they were very disappointed obviously very disappointed all right now when we heard here in verse 29 that Suji just read, when Mary, Mary saw him, she was troubled at his saying, consider what manner of greeting this was. All right. Did Mary lack faith here in the announcement by Gabriel, just like Zacharias? Or was she desiring just to know God, how God would fulfill his work? More like it was 
the second. She wasn't a lack of faith. She knew that she was not married. She was not pregnant. And she's wondering, okay, this is now, when you think about it, how would you like to have Michael or Gabriel come down and talk to you one on one tonight? <laughs> I think I think you'd start shivering a little. Would you listen to them? Yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> you know, especially if he has a big GRM. But, you know. but, so let's uh, let's assume that you uh, you listen. Here's the difference, Mary. It goes on here. Gabriel says, "Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found." What? what does it mean to find favor with God? What is it to, if you found favor with God, what does that mean? You're blessed. You're blessed. Why? You've done the right thing. You've done the right thing, lived according to the commandments. You followed his will. You were obedient to him and you're following his will. The difference between, and she goes on there, and it said, he says to her, Behold, you will conceive in your womb, etc. He will reign over the house. I'm going to jump to 34. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? All right. So she's still saying that. And then the answer comes a little later. Now, the difference between Mary and Zacharias. If Zacharias was up in age, he could have still said the same thing, but he probably should have backed off and just said, I don't understand it, but let it be. And that is what we're going to hear Mary say later on. She says, I really don't understand it, but let it be done according to your will. All right, Bill. Back to verse 29. Yep. Yeah. No, 30. 30. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Okay, she, Gabriel appears before her and makes that statement. She had to be frightened at first. Yes, the initial thing, but, frightened, but, but she didn't lose faith. No, but you're startled. You're probably questioning. But yeah. He, How's right this away, going to be Right away, he says, don't be afraid. Yeah. 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 Zacharias didn't have that. No, no. And no, I don't remember them saying, don't be afraid to him. No, but <laughs> how much older was he? She should have known after all yeah. those years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had experience. He, was, he, he was had experience. He was, <laughs> he was a priest. <laughs> you know, he said, he, as we say in the military, Carry on, you know. He, the timing of this was he was doing something he could only do once in his life. In his lifetime. I mean, he yes. says maybe, but we're all so dumb sometimes, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Could yeah. Be a lack of this faith. favor that Mary yeah. found. Right. But also, wait, hold on. Go ahead. Uh, this favor that Mary found, it's a special type of grace. Yes. It, it, yeah, in what sense? It, if Marcos is saying the favor that Mary found with God is it a special grace. Why is it or not? Well, I I just thought that kind of favor is only for this one woman. In all Good, point. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Out of all the people in the mm -hmm. world, he had to find the right woman to give birth. When you think about it, Without Mary saying yes, could Jesus ever have been born? No. 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 God the Father had to find the right woman who found favor with God because of her life. About how old was Mary at this time? 16. 14. 14. 13, 14. 13, 14. 13, 14. They generally say 14 years old when, when she, she gave birth. She was older as far as her maturity why she was she older had, as far as her maturity she didn't have uh, google or <laughs> she, grew up, she grew up in the temple uh, in, in other temple. words that's it she, they brought her into the temple when she was about how old three years old and who were taking care of her the priests her culture was greatly enriched yeah well, there's a song i can't remember the song but it was very popular and it's back in the 60s 70s Mary found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I mean, that's where I can yeah. get to the grace. Right. right. This has got to be a special kind of grace. Right. Yeah. Only one. I would say it's grace, but it had to be a special kind of woman. 
Oh yeah. The grace yeah. is the same, yeah. grace is the same. but grace is grace, just like sin is sin. She was, but she found favor because of her life. She was cl as close to perfection as yes. That's right. Now, and you want to ex exact. That's where you want to be close. Uh, be careful. Mm -hmm. There was only one perfect yep. God, man, and that's Jesus. All right. And what we're accused of, along with the Roman Catholics, is that we put her on a level almost where we make. They'll say we make her part yeah. of the Trinity. Yeah. No. Yeah. And we don't do that. Yeah. We don't do that. So we'll talk about the difference later. But go ahead. And then, Bill, you had something to say too, I right? think. Or you were going back to verse 30 or. No, I was going to say that because she was young. <coughs> yes. I mean, she startled. Yes. When they gave her yeah. Give me that. Okay. Yeah. Even though Zacharias had all that experience <coughs> and learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a young kid, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. I would be frightened too. <laughs> I'd be frightened even at my age. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know that St. Michael can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has the story. Michael has the story. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, move on here. Now, uh, in verse, let's read. Uh, well, I know if you would read verses 35 to 38. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now, let's go back there. In verse 37 uh, that Elena just read, For with God nothing will be impossible. It's interesting because in uh, the church, in the hymns of the church, it says here, um, as the church sings, Where God wills, you may have heard this. Where God will, and this is important, the order of nature is overthrown. <laughs> This is something you may want to write down. It's a very good statement. Where God wills, the order of nature is overthrown. That means that when people say to us, you know, why does God allow hurricanes and volcanoes and this and that? And other times you'll see a volcano occur and then the only thing standing in the church is a cross and an icon. Why were they not destroyed? In other words, where he wills, and in this case, he willed through whom? The woman Mary. All right? Now, it required two things. It required the grace of God to find, to give to Mary, but he had to find Obedience, obedience, the will of Mary. See, these two always go together. The grace of God and the will of the person. We have the choice. Could Mary, like Eve, have said no? Yes, she could have easily said, no, thank you. I don't understand it, and I don't want to understand it. All right? Ooh, yes, Angela? Angela? It just struck me a similarity between what she said, just uh -huh. a little bit similarity. And yeah. when Christ was praying before mm -hmm. his accusers came, yep. I believe, right? And he prayed and was crying and said, I'm going to paraphrase sure. something mm -hmm. like, if it's possible, take this cup from me. That's but correct. Not my will, mm -hmm. your will. Exactly. Mm -hmm. that's, right. that's a very good analogy where uh, Andrew just mentioned where Christ is uh, going to uh, be put on the cross. And he says to his father, uh, if, uh, if, you, if it is your will, take this cup from me. And if it's not, let thy will mm -hmm. be done. That's why we keep emphasizing the key phrase in the Lord's Prayer. 
thy will be done. Yeah. Then what we should say after that is, and please let me accept that will. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to ask for it, but then if he gives it to us, like he gave the grace through the Archangel Gabriel, but she had to accept the grace. Mm -hmm. So that when we are baptized or we go to confession or anything else, that when we receive the grace through the sacrament of baptism, chrismation, ordination, confession, we still have to ha uh, decide whether we're going to accept that and put it into practice. Mm -hmm. So that's why we all will be accountable for our choices that we make. So Mary made the biggest choice that anybody could have made in a lifetime. And it worked out for her. Now, if you recall, later on, when Christ is at the cross and he sees his disciples and they're questioning, who is my mother and who is my son? Sister. He says, anyone who does what? The will of God the Father is my brother, my sister, etc. So it comes back to this will of God. Where the God wills, the order of nature, he can do anything, anytime. Mm -hmm. But some people love to hold on to the fact, well, if God is good, why does this happen? Mm -hmm. You know, it's always projecting onto God. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is say, well, he does that because we have messed up. We've okay. sinned. And you're part of that, and I'm part of that. And until we accept that, we're going to live in this world forever. And it's not going to be good until who comes again? Mm -hmm. Until Christ comes again in the second coming. <coughs> so anybody, you know, it's like, let's be honest. It, we would love to have peace in the Middle East, correct? Oh, yes. yes. Should we still work toward that? Yes. Yes. Will we ever have it before Christ comes again? Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can put, substitute the word America, Africa, yeah. con any continent you want. Mm -hmm. All right? There will never be peace. There will always be division because the devil is the great separator. Mm -hmm. And so we have to accept that. Now, the question becomes, what do you do about it? You work toward peace, of course. And so that's where you go on with that. Okay, let's read the note down there, <coughs> Helena, if you would, on 133 to 30, 31 to 33. I'm backing up. We're going to read some notes now. Gabriel's announcement emphasizes two truths. One, you will conceive in your womb the Lord Jesus took his flesh, his human nature, from Mary herself. Okay. So, is he going to be born like any other child in her womb? Yes. yes. Is she going to nurture him like any other mother? Yes. yes. And that's to emphasize his what? Human, human, human nature. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Elena. And two, this is the divine son of the highest in Mary's womb. Thus, the one person, Jesus, the eternal son and word of God, is both fully human and fully divine. This truth was crucial in one in the defeat of the heretic Nestorius, who taught that Mary conceived a new man who was later joined by the divine Son of God. Are there still Christian sects that believe that today? Probably. Yes. I didn't follow exactly what she was saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go back here. This is the divine Son of the Highest in Mary's womb. Thus, the one person, Jesus, the eternal Son and Word of God, is both fully human and fully divine. He's born from Mary, and he takes, what's the word that we uh, say in the creed? Uh, incarnate? Yes, very good. He became incarnate. He became incarnate. What does the word incarnate mean? He took on? Uh, human. human. Okay. He took on the human form the flesh all right so he became incarnate god became incarnate so that we could touch him we could feel him we could see him we could know who he is all right so what happens here he is fully god 
and yet he is fully man, all right? And then it says, uh, as she was reading here, the truth was crucial in the defeat of the heretic Nestorius, who taught that Mary conceived a mere man who was later joined by the divine son of God. So you can imagine, there were so many heretics in the early church. There's in the creed that we read on Sunday. It's divided into two sections. Does anybody know how many uh, ver uh, parts are in the first section? Seven. There are seven articles. And then the second part, I, I think it's seven, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the seven. But the, what, what, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. If you go through the whole of them, I think it comes out to 14, but it doesn't matter. The point is, it's divided up into two. And this was formulated at the first and second ecumenical councils. We got the creed. At these two councils. Father, what does it mean who was later joined for the divine son of God? In other words, what he's saying here is he, she gave birth just to a mere man. Okay. He just gave birth to a mere man and later was joined by the divine son as if the sun came down upon him and they became uh, one. Changed him. Changed him. Now, I don't have time to go into it, mm -hmm. but one of them who would not believe that Jesus is fully God are the Mormons. And we could probably discuss a lot, if you want to go into it someday down the road, on the differences on Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, Christian scientists, etc. All right, because we could do a whole thing on them. And you'll start to see that they don't go back to the early church. Now, the first ecumenical council, does anybody know what year that was held? 325. 325. That was the draft. Yes. And so then later on, the second one comes, I think, in 381. Notice, for almost 400 years, there was no creed, or at least for 300 plus. How do you think people got along without that? If they didn't come to church on Sunday and started saying, I believe in one God, what did they base it on? Their what? Faith. It was their faith. They listened to whom? Who was preaching during this time? From the beginning, it was the 12 apostles, then the 70. Then you had Chrysostom, all the Holy Fathers, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian. Isn't it amazing where God wills, he'll send the right people. And most of the people couldn't read. or anything. And they couldn't read. That's why we had icons and images and frescoes and all that. They couldn't read. And later on, they were told that the only ones who were the educated were who? Clergy. Clergy. That got to be a problem <laughs> in a different way. Uh, that got to be a major problem. But the, what happened here is the Holy Spirit guided the church. Yes. You see how that is important. We had no written creed for 380 years. You had fragments of what Paul had written, and they weren't combined in a nice Orthodox study Bible. There were different little letters that were given around, and they, they picked them up and read them. Then you have Tertullian, all these people. So it comes down to, in the end, if it's not for the Holy Spirit, there would be no church. And in all the confusion that we're seeing since then, it just occurs to me that we need the Holy Spirit within us more than ever. More than ever. More than ever. I would say if there's one thing that we need today is the Holy Spirit to discern the good from the evil spirits. Mm -hmm. And I think what's happening is, and it was predicted, the devil will hide be in uh, a lamb's clothing. Mm -hmm. He'll be, you know, a wolf in lamb's clothing. And he's doing a good job of it. Yeah. He's making people think good is evil, yeah. evil is good. You go on and on. Right is wrong, wrong is right. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we live in today. Okay, let's finish off there. I'll let her finish reading. The church of true teaching is proclaimed 
in the festal hymn of Annunciation, which declares, the Son of God becomes the Son of the Virgin as Gabriel announces the coming of grace. The Son of God becomes the Son of the Virgin as Gabriel announces the coming of grace. It's a nice, nice uh, hymn, uh, beautiful uh, words for that. Uh, Sandra, if you would read the, uh, one thir the note on 134. Mary's question, how can this be? Does not indicate a lack of faith as Zacharias's question did. Rather, she is merely inquiring into the manner in which something so extraordinary could happen. She was frightened, obviously, as Bill mentioned. Mm -hmm. You'd be afraid, I'd be afraid at, at that age and, and knowing the circumstance. But because she was brought up the way she was, she very quickly, I mean, we only read a few verses here, and then she says, Let it be done according to your word. Wow. That's powerful. That is powerful. And thank Mary that <laughs> she, she did that. Okay, go ahead, uh, Sandra. 130. Holy One is a yeah. messianic title. Note the revelation of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Highest, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and that's in uh, 135 there. Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, mm -hmm. let it be done according to your word. And the angel departed from her. <clears throat> okay, now... Let's just end by reading on page 1361. We're going to read about Mary, and then next week I'll go into the con concept of the Immaculate Conception, but we won't deal with that tonight. Okay, so, uh, Sandra, go ahead and start, and then I'll ask Marcos uh, and Katarina to take over. For 2,000 years, the church has preserved the memory of, of the Virgin Mary as the prototype of all Christians. The model of what we are to become in Christ. Mary was truly pure and unconditionally obedient to God. The tradition of the church holds that Mary remained a virgin all her life. While lifelong celibacy is not a model for all Christians to follow, Mary's spiritual purity, her wholehearted devotion to God is certainly to be emulated. Okay, so in Mary's case, now I, I don't know how you think about this, but I look at it this way. When somebody says, well, no, she had children later or whatever, I've heard that. I, I say to them, after you give birth to the Son of God, why would you even consider anything else? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just to me is unfathomable. Right. Unfathomable. We're going to talk about uh, what's the teaching on the Orthodox Church about Joseph? He had children yeah. by whom? His previous, previous, uh, previous marriage. All right. And we'll talk about brothers and sisters. What you've got to remember at that time, when we talk about brethren, brothers, sisters, they also use the same. We don't think of it like you think of it today as much because that would also include what you would call cousins, any type of relatives. So it is believed that uh, it has been written by so many people about the Virgin Mary remaining virgin and that she had no other children with whom. Did she live most of the time after she left the foot of the cross? John. What? John. 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 With John. With John. He took care of her, and she was there. And then we talk about when she died, uh, you know, uh, the uh, door, as we call it, dormition, when she fell asleep, uh, then all the uh, <laughs> disciples came back. Okay, go ahead, Sandra. Let's continue. Mary is also our model in that she was the first person to receive Jesus Christ. As Mary bore Christ in her womb physically, all Christians now have the privilege of bearing God within them spiritually. By God's grace and mercy, we are purified and empowered to become our like king. <coughs> the honor we give to Mary also signifies our view of who Jesus is. From early times, the church is called her mother of God, Theotokos, or God-bearer, a title which implies that her son is both fully man and fully God. As his mother, Mary was the source of Jesus' human nature, yet the one she bore in her womb was also the eternal God. You'd be surprised how many people will come in who are not Orthodox, and after you hear the um, priest say, remembering our most holy, most pure, most blessed and ever virgin Mary, the Theotokos. I can't tell you how many people <laughs> still say to me, Father, who's the Theotokos? And, and so don't assume anything. Yeah. Don't assume anything. And so you will hear Theotokos, think of it, Theo meaning God. And this would be giver. Yeah, I, I've heard it 
Gibber, Bert Gibber, and 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 Bob Beer. Now, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, right. personally, and this is just a personal thing, I like Beer. Yeah. Yes. Why? When you think of, and I'm, I'm splitting hairs here a little, but when you think of Gibber, what does that connotate versus Beer? Like it originates from. Beer. Yes, it's, it's almost already. like she's the yeah, one that. Yeah gave him this birth when really she received the grace yeah. to give birth. So she is really, to me, there. there. Yes. I'd much rather, and it's easier to explain that to people who are not Orthodox. Much easier, much easier. So think about it always. You'll see a birth giver, don't get me wrong. In fact, you'll, I, well, for example, in, in the Russian translated in, into the um, Dormition into English, in giving birth, you preserve your virginity in falling asleep. You what are you saying? I'm just thinking <laughs> the, the beginning word. Is this really the place for a serenade? <laughs> 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 you know the tone, tone one. <laughs> I'm thinking of the words at the beginning in giving birth. I was trying to think in giving birth. Here and so that's where you, but it's in a different connotation. So I would say use the word uh, God bear. Okay, Marcos, pick up where uh, Sandra left off. Wherever where that was. <laughs> Therefore. Therefore. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Therefore, because of her character, and especially because of her role in God's plan of salvation, Christians appropriately honor Mary as the first amongst the saints. The archangel Gabriel initiated this honor, honor in her. And his address to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. See where that prayer comes from? Mm -hmm. Right from scripture. Go ahead. This salutation clearly indicates that God himself had chosen Mary to honor Mary. Her favorite status was confirmed when she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was then six months pregnant with John the Baptist. Elizabeth greeted Mary with these words. Blessed are you among women. and Blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. And Mary herself, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, predicted the honor that would be paid to her throughout history. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. We're going to read that in Luke 148. So when any Protestant, and I want to be careful, anybody who doesn't believe that she is to be called blessed, it's right from Scripture, 148. Behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Okay, go ahead, uh, Marco. In obedience to God's clear intention, therefore, the Orthodox Church honors Mary in icons, hymns, and special feast days. We entreat her as the human being who was the most intimate of Christ on earth to intercede with her son on our behalf. We ask her as the first believer of the mother and the mother of God and the mother of the church for guidance and protection. We venerate her, but we do not worship her, for worship belongs to God alone. That last sentence is critical. We venerate her just as we do all the saints, but we do not worship her, for worship belongs to God alone. Catherine, why don't you read the last uh, two paragraphs? In Matthews, Vespers, and all the services of the hours of prayer, we sing this hymn which expresses Mary's unique place in creation. It is truly right to bless your Theotokos, ever blessed the most pure, and the mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without defilement, you gave birth to God the word. True Theotokos will magnify you. Good. Any questions on what we discussed this evening? The background, anything on marriage? You know, Protestants have a hard time with the word venerate. I think by venerate, we still pray to her. No. Yeah, well, worship. Worship. Worship, her. worship her. They don't understand it. And they don't understand that. It's a lot of higher place, some yeah. higher level. Yeah. Create Orthodox that they're not brought up in the faith, right? They also say that I've had this sin. You know, you worship the saints. I said, no, we don't. No, no. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and some of them just don't know. I, like you said, some may be even it's Orthodox. Right there in the scriptures about yeah. the intercession of the saints. Right. And so when we pray through, we're praying through these mm -hmm. saints. We're, yeah. We're praying to just, it's, it, it's so beautiful. I feel sorry for people that haven't grasped the simple well, part. You know, part of the problem, they just read words. They don't read the meaning uh -huh. in the word. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's important what you just said, though. When you go back, 
Um, and you look at the difference between worship and, and veneration, and you go back to the Greek or the Hebrew, you're going to find that's where you have to go. And that's where once you start translating, we lose a lot. We lose a lot. And it's difficult. So I, I always I say it's if you have the original Greek or you have the original Hebrew or Aramaic, uh, you know, uh, to be able to understand that. I, I like some people from the Middle East who, you know, grew up in Syria, <laughs> Lebanon, etc., who had uh, a grasp of Arabic, you know, and so forth and got close. But we lose something through the translation. And so it's difficult. Now, Mary is always to what side of Christ on the iconostasis? Looking at the icons, As you look, the left. She's always on the left. All right, he's on the right. Mary's on the left. Who's next to Jesus all the time? John, John the Baptist. All right, those are the three key. So when you think of Mary, she is the best example of what we all should be of what we should all be men and women all right and so when we talk about going praying <clears throat> to them and for their intercession it would be no different when the, some people say to me well father you you shouldn't do that you could go directly to jesus christ and i said sure of course and you should but let me ask you this. When you are sick, or if I opened up your wallet right now, <coughs> would you have a picture of your loved one in your wallet? And they would say yes. I said, I bet you even kiss it once in a while. <laughs> then don't blame me for kissing icons. Yeah. <laughs> if you can kiss your grandmother and your child and your parent, mm -hmm. then I'm doing the same thing, except they're a little older. All right? Or you ask someone to pray for you, just like they're asking the, the saints to pray. And that's the other thing is when anybody in a Roman Catholic church or Protestant, what's the first thing they do? Get the prayer group together. Call this one who's going to call that one who's going to call this one. And we have a specific need here. And you're praying for one another. That's the, what we're doing with the Virgin Mary, John the Baptist, St. Peter, St. Paul, Barbara, etc. All right, all the saints. So I think that as we... Pray for one another. And by the way, who's called to be a saint? All of us. All, all of us. All it means is to be separate. To be separate from this world, to live according to the kingdom of God, and to follow and be obedient to Christ. So we're all called. Every Most of the epistles he writes, he writes, Paul says, to the saints at yeah. here. We're all called to be saints. I gotta tell now, they may not time. be recognized by the church as having performed miracles yet and all that, but we're all called to be saints. Marcos. I gotta tell a funny one. Go ahead. But uh, it's true. I was in the midst of a whole lot of Protestants and something very valuable was lost. And I was the only Orthodox there. And I, I just said, <laughs> I said, well, let's pray through St. Panutius. <laughs> they went nuts. nuts. <laughs> But guess what? Did you find it? up in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they were, they, these were Amish, by the so way. You, oh, <laughs> See, so praying to the they saints does nuts. work. Yeah. 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 Amish, yeah. And, uh, there were Amish and Protestants mixed in. Yeah. Right. By the way, if you, uh, it, it's good to read about the saints each day. Remind me, Denise, it remind me. Uh, every year they have a nice booklet. It's a little expensive, but I, it might be $15. But it has a saint for each day. Uh, where it gives you uh, a, a saint from the saint and then also a little description. And there's so many saints for each day. I mean, you'd be surprised, you know, it's not just it's also five there or six. Daily prayers. It's also in, yeah. yeah, in the daily prayers and also on the Goar. Yeah. And when you read these yeah. things, they'll say, this one is uh, to be known and prayed to yes. because they have ke healed cancer, right. for example. Or they had this. A good one would be Nectarios, yes. uh, the, the one 1921, I think he died. Um, uh, uh, Edgina in, in Greece. Edgina. 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 And uh, he's known uh, because what happened after he died, they put his coat on the person who was sick next to him and the person was healed. Yeah. So there's different ones for eyesight, etc. So it's, uh, it's, I always find that interesting. We probably should make a list because there's not only one, there are quite a I few. Have, there are I a lot. Got a list. I got a list. You have a list? Yeah, right you want to bring that chat? We'll be glad to type that up and share it. Uh, this way we'll know, you know. 
person was curious. So you have, you have any for her. disobedient wives? Uh, <laughs> 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 only kidding. Only kidding. Only kidding. I have to go to confession. No, no, no. <laughs> There's one remedy for that. Divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I think we better pray, all right? Time to pray. All right, we'll continue next this week. This is why more people should come. All the Zoom people need this is one of those things. You've got to be there. You gotta be there, yeah. You've got to be there. Appreciate it. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. We thank you, Lord our God, that again on this occasion you have opened our eyes to the light of your wisdom. You have gladdened our hearts with the knowledge of truth. We entreat you, Lord, help us always to do your will. Bless our souls and bodies, our words and deeds. Enable us to grow in grace, virtue, and good habits, that your name may be glorified, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay, we'll continue next week, and I'll do another question and answer, and we'll go into also the... Uh, Immaculate conception of the We're going to get to Christmas story by Christmas. Oh, I love it. Now, just remember that the uh, Russian Christmas Julian calendar is 30 days worried. later. So that means January 7th. I don't know if anything's ever been done. <laughs> What's that? Movies that I know.